Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter, and today I just unboxed this Craft Express Tumbler Press. I have one already, but I have a different one. I have it in blue, <laughs> but I wanted to show you how to use this one right out of the box. So the first thing is, we're going to be sublimating this today. So we'll talk about this in just a second, but before we get started, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. I totally appreciate all the support that I can get. All right, so let's talk about this Tumblr Press. First of all, it's super easy to use. Um, what you and I haven't turned it on because I want to show you how to adjust your settings to accommodate certain um, blanks so what's important about sublimation is that you have a tight um, like a tight squeeze um, so I want to show you this if I put this in and I close it right now I know you can't tell because it's so far but do you see how I can move my thing that's clearly not good you want to have medium pressure which means it shouldn't budge uh, you don't want it to crack but so the way you would do that is I'm going to open this up these screws are to um, to replace or to change out this heat pad so the heat pad comes in two different sizes I believe on this one because this is a two-in-one um, but so these screws are just to keep the heat platen, I guess, um, in place. To adjust the pressure here, what you wanna do is we're gonna use these two black screws back here, right here, these two. So we're going to, oops, I'm turning it, when I'm looking at it this way, I'm turning it counterclockwise. You wanna make sure that both of yours, um, let me catch it up because I started to unscrew this one first. But you want it even, right? Because obviously you want both sides to, um, to have the right pressure, the same pressure. So I am just going and then, and right now I don't have it plugged in. So I, my plug is right here. You can see it's still um, tied up right here. So yeah, it's literally right out of the box. <laughs> so I just wanna test in here, okay. I can still push it a little bit. So I'm gonna just do a few more. All right. You know, it still doesn't feel tight enough. All right, I think that's tight. Um, so put it in. I don't know. <laughs> I'm always worried about breaking something. And this is because this is the frosted glass. It's different when it's a tumbler and it's just, uh, you know, the white tumbler. All right. So the other thing I'm going to do is I noticed it when I pulled this out, it had, it looks like there's lint in this. So I'm just going to wipe this up really quickly. So I'm going to grab, this feels like it's wet. Okay. I don't know if just in shipping it got kind of weird. Okay, so I'm just gonna wipe it so that there's nothing. Okay, so it feels nice and clean. <laughs> okay, all right, so now that you know the black screws, oh, this is the kind of halfway in between. This is to tighten it up to give you the different pressure. When I close this, you can see this gap right here. So that means when I put this in, and I wanna do this all before it gets hot because um, once you start to get your blank heated, then that process starts. So we're basically, um, with the sublimation ink, what we're doing is we're changing it from a solid to, um, to a gas. So with the heat, it turns into a gas and the, the sublimation, I don't know, um, particles, <laughs> if you want to call it that, gets embedded into the, into the blank. So as soon as it starts to heat up, we're starting the process. And so unless you want it to, to actually start the process, it should not have any heat to it. So I'm going to close this up just to show you. So there is a gap right here. So I could stick my, well, this is probably the easier view. So you can see my hand. Um, so that means what I like to do is um, where I put the tape, I usually have the tape up here. So it's a um, visual for me. So that halfway through the press, I'm going to open it up uh, with a glove. I'm going to turn it and close it back in. So where there was a gap before, now it's getting full heat from, you know, from another area. 
All right, I'm doing a couple different blanks or a couple different um, designs just so that we can see it, okay? So, all right, I think we are ready. So I'm gonna close this up. This is, um, this is the Craft Express sublimation glass cans. So it's 18 ounces and it's an eight pack. Um, I love, sorry, I've been doing it this way so that you can see it, but also down here. So this is the frosted glass, I love it. So I have it in a couple different sizes. And what I like about the frosted glass, um, I mean, just think about how much heat is in this thing. I've also sublimated it and then used a, and put in a candle, a tea light candle in there. So it's, you know, it gives that like glow, which I love. Okay, so let's um, turn this on for the first time. And for this one, it says to do it for 365 degrees at 70 seconds. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use this. So I do love my Craft Express products. Um, I use Craft Express blanks, and I also use Craft Express heat, um, basically the heat machines. All right, so I'm plugging it in on the side, and I'm going to plug it in here. Okay, so there's just a, you turn it on and off right here. Okay, so you hit your first, down here, you have four buttons. You have a set, a down, an up arrow, and a clear. So the first thing we're gonna do is for set, oops, I should open this up. Um, set, and I'm gonna change um, the temperature to 385. Set, and it's gonna go to the time, and I'm gonna increase it from 60 seconds to 70 seconds, and then I'm done. It will beep when it's ready. Okay, so in the meantime, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this little guy. So I'm gonna trim this because this can, you can see that it's not straight. It's straight for the majority of it, right? But it kind of curves here and here. I wanna avoid the paper there because when you start to wrap it and tape it, um, it the paper is kind of thick. So it's going to cause some holes unless you tape it really, really well. So I wanna avoid the whole thing by just um, having the printed stuff in the straight areas. I know. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab a pair of scissors. So give me just one second. And do, 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 do. where are my scissors? Of course, whenever I'm ready to cut, my scissors disappear. All right, I think I've got a pair here right here. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to trim it down here. And this says Baseball Mama. And I'm also going to trim it right here so that none of the white overlaps each other. And it'll just be easier for us. Just to where we can see what's going on. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna line this up. And it's gonna look like this, which I think is good. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my heat resistant tape. You need heat resistant tape because, as you can imagine, this is gonna be 385 degrees. It's gonna be smoking hot. So you wanna make sure that we get, um, your tape isn't gonna melt onto your blank. So, um, you know, when I put this down, I always like to um, do a little tab up here because when it's hot and you take it out, you do need to release it right away. Like you should be taking out your, um, your design right away because it will continue to heat, right? It, just think of it like when you're cooking, um, and you take something out of the oven, it is smoking hot, right? <laughs> so as you're, as you leave it, like with the tin foil, for example, it's still cooking, and so you don't want that. Um, so you wanna be able to pull this off. And I love this little machine here. It's on Amazon. 
So I want to be able to, even though it's piping hot, I want to be able to pull this off pretty easily. So you know what else? Like I kind of feel like right here, you see how it lifts up a little bit? I'm tempted to cut it to make it easier on us so that we don't have that curved. I can kind of feel it right there. I feel like the rest of it, well, I guess we can tape a little bit more. It doesn't hurt to tape it, right? Okay. I feel like this top part is good. I just want to make sure this bottom part is good. All right. I, I know I, I tend to over tape, but that's okay. <laughs> There's no such thing as over taping, right? All right, so we've got it. It's at 385 degrees. It's ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab I'm going to grab a glove and then I'm also going to grab this. This is um, a Teflon, a silicone um, pad. So I know it's not going to get, um, the ink's not going to transfer onto here. So, all right, I'm going to stick this in and I'm going to keep this side up. So that's my visual. So that halfway through, I'm going to take it out and rotate it. Okay. So it started at 70 seconds. We're going to go down to 35 seconds. When it does, I'm going to open it up and rotate it. And then... So I close that up and then we'll rotate it, stick it back in and then pull it out and see what it looks like. And then I wish you could see it right now, but the counter says it's one. It is my first, very first press on this thing. <laughs> so let's see. Um, what else can I tell you? I love doing tumblers because, especially sublimation tumblers, because all the details are on there. So whether you want pictures or you want an image, it's all the colors that you can't get with um, just vinyl or HTV. So that's on any sublimation blank. I like it because it's permanent. Ooh. Okay, so let's turn this around a little bit. Okay. And let's do it for another 35 seconds. And I'm looking at this. And I feel like I can see the colors um, transforming, like it's it's gonna come through. So knock on wood that it's gonna be an amazing project. <laughs> I love the reveal on sublimation projects. Um, it's just so fun to open it and it's like, <laughs> The great thing about sublimation projects too is that it doesn't matter how you wash it. So um, it's gonna be on there permanently, which is nice because I always worry about my um, about my shirts and whatever, like, you know, it depends on how people wash it. Your HTV could peel away and stuff. So, all right, I'm gonna pull this out and let's peel this. We're getting there. Can you see it? Baseball mama. I love it. It's frosted. Now keep in mind that um, sublimation ink is transparent. So depending on the image, and I think on this one, I feel like it's too, maybe it needs more pressure. Let's try another one. Okay, so I'm going to close this up for a second. I'm going to apply more pressure. And let's see, that's how we know. All right, so I'm gonna put this aside. It's super cute, but I feel like it's kind of faint. Let's do a different one. Um, I'll open this up and let's see if we can make it better. I'm gonna do a really bright, a really bright design. And this is gonna happen. I feel like it's cute, but I don't think my colors were supposed to be that light, so we'll see in a second. 
Let's see if this is better. And maybe I might even add a little bit more time. So let's trim this for a second. So you can see on this one, the colors even before the heat, it's already very vibrant. Um, when you add the heat uh, for sublimation, the colors get very bright. So this, I have a feeling, is going to be amazing. I've never sublimated this before, this um, design. So let's see what that looks like. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna put this right. Okay. I feel like that's a good fit. All right, this feels like a very good snug fit. And I'm, you know, I'm going to up this. And I'm going to do the full 70 seconds and then flip it. All right, so here's the first one. This is still really hot. So I feel like I've done it for longer instructions wise. <laughs> Last time I did this. So I'm going to leave it in, like I said, for a little bit longer. I'm going to do a full 70 seconds and then I'm going to turn it, um, I'm going to rotate it and do another 70 seconds. I think the colors are going to get brighter and we shall see. So it's a little bit of tinkering. Um, also, um, I can't look it up right now, but you know what? I can look it up on my phone. So give me a second. Let me see what the what general instructions there are for sublimation times. Um, time and temp for frosted <laughs> class. So, okay, let's see. Yeah, so this one says for 240 seconds, and the first one we only did for 70 seconds. So even if I double this, it's only 140. So I'm going to rotate it, and I'm gonna press it. So let's see. You don't want too much pressure or you risk breaking the tumbler. Warm up the mud press and set to 120 seconds. You're gonna press each half for a total of 240 seconds. So 120 and 120. So I'm doing 70 and 70. I, we gotta do 70 one more time at least. So I'm gonna do a full 70 seconds and then I'm gonna, I did just a quarter of a turn, I'm gonna do another quarter of a turn. <laughs> We're testing it out. Um, yeah, I thought it was kind of, I didn't think it was that long. So that would account for this one not being super bright. You can still see it, you can read, I mean, obviously I can read Baseball Mama. Um, let me see if I printed this twice. Oh, I did print it twice. We can do it again. So that's the nice thing about seeing this. So we can give it another shot. All right, so that was our, we've rotated it once, we're gonna rotate it one more time. It's still gonna be a little bit short, so I think I'm going to, we'll go half the next time, okay. All right, so I'm gonna rotate it some more. Okay, let's do that. And I'm trying to see if I could see the colors coming through, but we'll see. <laughs> All right, in the meantime, what we can do is let's cut this one. I'm determined to get this right and that you know I feel like crafting in general with all the machines so like the Cricut for example right I have four different Cricuts 
and they're all a little bit different. So even when I use the same, um, the same materials, um, they cut differently. So I feel like none of these are 100% accurate. So we're gonna mess around with that one. Okay, this one I can move aside. Um, wait, not right there. I'm gonna move it over here. I'm gonna pull out another one. All right, this last one, because we're at 210 seconds, right? I still need like another 30 seconds. So I'm gonna rotate it a little bit more. And do it for 30 seconds, and that should be good. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that one. See if we can get this down. And trim it a little bit here along the heart, just so that the white doesn't overlap. And I'm gonna have to pull it out. So let's do that first. All right, let's see what we have here. This got way more time, right? Let's see what we have. Oh yeah. Look how cute this is. It's called summer water. It's like normal water, but it has alcohol in it. And look at those oranges and limes and lemons. So much different, right? So let me compare the two. I know the colors are different, so you can't, I mean, right next to each other, you can see this one has all the colors, right? So let's redo this Baseball Mama one just to try it out. So I'm gonna move that to the side, okay. I'm gonna trim the hearts a little bit more. And then we're gonna try that one more time. It's gonna have more time a little bit more pressure as well, because you remember I changed the pressure a little bit. Okay. right here just to make sure that it's down it feels good all right let's stick it in so tape side up and do it for a full 70 seconds and we're gonna see if that makes it more magical <laughs> I mean it's crazy because we only did it for 70 seconds the first time so this one had so much more time and it's so stinking cute at that and you can see the colors right so cute I love it all right um okay so these like I said you can put a tea light candle in there it comes with the bamboo top and the straws are like this so I love that super super cute so you can even do a boba drink I think oh these are kind of small all right, we're down to 20 seconds, and then we're gonna flip it. That'll get us to 140. I can't wait to try the, to, to compare the two side by side. Um, okay, let's rotate this. All right. Um, what else can I show you? This is from Amazon and it can hold these two rolls will cut into little pieces. So it's ready to go, which is really, really nice. And this one's for a longer piece if you want it. So that's on my Amazon shop. I feel like every person that does sublimation has one. Um, and then you're going to need a 
silicone pad. <laughs> and this silicone pad is great for regular heat presses. You know, the handheld ones that you just put down for a sweatshirt or a t-shirt. Because if you do sublimation or even HTV with it, because it's silicone, um, it won't stick to your pad. So um, when you do flat ones and it goes past your blank, that ink will seep down to here. So that's why it's really good to have. This one's actually from Artist Spree. And so I like having that just, um, it's a nice big size. And <laughs> I had the regular gray ones that, you know, like Cricut, for example, that their heat pad. And I wasn't paying attention one time. And I pressed it and it went over and my whole design was on the, on the, the heat pad. You might not think that it doesn't matter because like who cares what the heat pad looks like, but because it's it, the um, it's sublimation ink, when as you keep reheating it, um, that ink right turns into a gas and it could hit your blank again. It will be lighter, right? Because it as you add heat, um, the ink gets weak or you know just less, right? So if I press the same design, like if I use this one again, it's going to be not as dark and then if I press it again it's gonna be even lighter so you can keep reusing this because you can see there's still ink available but the ink is less so each time it becomes less right I'm gonna pull this out and then this time I'm gonna go the full 70 seconds and then we should be done okay this is still kind of hot we're gonna compare it to this one which I really hope is gonna make a difference we shall see but it's super easy to use, right? You can see um, there's just four buttons down here. So it's super easy. And then just the on and off button. So I love being able to use <laughs> a machine that doesn't have a lot of instructions because I don't like to read. Um, and I'd rather fumble through and learn from my mistakes. I know. That's just the type of learner that I am. So <laughs> sorry, but not sorry. But then all the mistakes that I make, I remember to retell them to you guys. Um, so you guys reap the benefits. <laughs> That's going to be my excuse for doing it that way. All right, we're down to 20 seconds and we'll be able to see this. Um, the other thing that sometimes like when you do flat items, I will put on a like butcher paper in this case, cause it's totally wrapped. There's nowhere for the ink to escape. So that's why I didn't, um, I didn't wrap it with butcher paper. All right, here we go. so hot okay yeah it definitely turned out brighter so let me show you can you tell uh yeah you can see it because the the word baseball it's darker over here like all the colors are a little bit darker right and over here it's really hard to see the diamonds but you can really see the diamonds here and then I'm going to rotate it a little bit more so that you can see on the back side. So you can see here the um, the two hearts are the two hearts and the two balls are definitely more prominent than here. This one's kind of ghosting. So all right, I hope that was helpful and let me know if you have any comments or questions. I will see you guys next time. Bye.